A robin and bits of straw from Wurzel Gummidge? Check. A bicycle bell from the Jolly Postman? Check. Radioactive samosa from Little Bad Man? Check. A positive attitude for our next adventure of the day? Check. Although I'm not sure where I left the keys to lock this cabinet up. Hmm. Let me look. Uh, nope. No luck. Hey ho. Maybe the Puffineers have seen it. Jasper? Skylar Ray? Ah, oh, these two are never on time. Papa, we're here. We're just petting Harry McClary from Donaldson's Dairy. Ah, he's so cute. I love dogs. Can we keep him? We've got enough going on in this library, don't you think? I've only just got the shelves restocked with cakes from the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. Mmm, cakes. My favourite snack. What's your favourite snack, Skylar, eh? My favourite snack is grapes. And what about you, Bubba? My favourite snack is grapefruit. And that's only because my wife has got me on a diet. But really and truly, it's cakes. But do you know what tastes just as sweet? The taste of a mystical, magical adventure. That's right. You're listening to the Puffin Podcast, Mission Imagination. So, joining me in the Puffin Library today are Puffineers Skylar Ray and Jasper. Hello. Hello. Since we're talking about food, let's answer this very important would you rather dilemma sent in from Darcy from Bristol. Hello, my name is Darcy. My question is, would you rather lick a toad or eat a snail with the shell on? What do you reckon, Puffin Ears? I would rather lick a toad because snails are like so slimy and squidgy all the time. Yeah, I know what you mean. And Skylar Ray, would you rather lick a toad or eat a snail with the shell still on? I would rather lick a toad because I don't want to kill the snail's life. I love snails. Okay, that's all right. I like that answer. I think I'm with you, Skylar Ray and Jasper. I think I'd rather lick a toad as well. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't eat a snail. I don't think I could still do that, especially if it's still alive. That's bad. That's bad. And what about this one, you two? This has been sent in from Zachary, who's seven years old. Hello, my name is Zachary. I'm seven years old. My question is, would you rather have a toe for a nose or nose for a toe? That's a great question. So Puffin Ears, I know what I'd be leaning towards, but I'd love to know your thoughts. Skylar Ray, I'll start with you. Um, a nose where my toe is. Because if you had a toe for a nose, you couldn't breathe because your toe doesn't have any holes for you to breathe in. Yep, I agree with you. And Jasper? A nose for a toe, because Skylar Ray is right. Okay. Because you can't breathe. <laughs> and finally, Skylar Ray and Jasper, do you have a question for us to answer? Well, would you rather drink sour milk or rotten eggs? I think I'd rather drink sour milk because the taste of rotten eggs would just mm -hmm. make me sick. Blech. I would rather choose sour milk because rotten eggs stink for a star and you could get food poisoning from them if they're rotten. Absolutely. And Skylar Ray, do you have a question for us? Would you rather be as tiny as a mouse or big as a giant? As big as a giant, cause like mouse is like everybody would disturb you, and like people would try and kill you all of the time. I think I would rather be as big as a giant, and that's because I wouldn't want to be so small where I have to run away from all the giants all the time. So I'd be big as a giant, but I'd be a careful giant. I'd watch my step. Who's that coming into the puffin library? It's Robin Stevens, the brilliant author of the Murder Most Unladylike book series. Tell us, Robin, what makes a great mystery story? Hello. I think a great mystery story has lots of twists and turns. It has a really exciting plot, a great mystery, and some detectives that you really like and want to spend time with. 
And Robin, where do you get your inspiration for your books? I get my inspiration from other books I read, from TV and films I watch, from places I go and people I meet. There's inspiration absolutely everywhere, and you can always find a great beginning for a story. My favorite mysteries are the ones that take you by complete surprise. Although, I'm still trying to figure out where I left the keys to the library of made-up things. <laughs> One of life's biggest mysteries. Anyway, Robin... Tell us where we're going today on our adventure and if there's anything we need to bring with us. Today, we're going to a land called Mysterium, where we'll be uncovering clues and solving mysteries in order to discover parts of this magical world together. First up, we need to bring our checklist of detective items with us so we're well equipped for our time there. So everyone, grab your detective magnifying glasses, a handy notebook for writing clues down, and a detailed map of the land so we're solving these mysteries together. Got him? Great. We'll be catching a train via the secret portal behind this door, which appears as you pull on one of my books on the shelf. Let's try it, and it'll reveal the train to this magical land. Okay, everyone here and listeners at home, gather your detective items as we're about to head on a journey of mystery. And mayhem. Sounds like the train is ready. Yes, here are your tickets. And we're gonna board in three, two, one. Wow, that train was so fast. We're here already, and it smells salty. Yes, welcome to the island of Mysterium, where nothing is as it seems. Grab your magnifying glasses and have a look to see if you can see anything. We're on a sandy beach. Cool. There's footprints right in front of us. And there are some basset hounds over there. Are they friendly? Can I strike them? Yes, I love dogs. These dogs are our friends on the island who will help us sniff out the less obvious clues. What do you reckon, Puffin Ears? Shall we follow these footprints? Yes. Great. And let's take these dogs with us. Oh, what's over there? It looks like an abandoned ship. It is. In fact, there's a pretty interesting story here. There was once a box of treasure that pirates went looking for on this very island, full of gold. The pirates were after one particular glittery gold coin, but because they didn't follow the rules of this land, their ship got stuck here and they weren't able to leave. <laughs> well, uh... I've got to get home for dinner. <laughs> uh, the wife's making spag bowl. So on that note, uh, Robin, please tell us what rules there are here so we're not trapped here for eternity. <laughs> Don't want the spag bowl to get cold, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, it's pretty simple. It's very important not to remove or take anything from Mysterium. Mysterium hates things going missing for obvious reasons. There's enough mysteries here as it is. So be warned, Puffineers, if you take anything or remove anything from its natural state, the sand will start sinking, covering your whole body in sand. And we might be stuck here for, well, forever. forever. Got it, I think. Where else can we explore, Robin? Let's ask our sniffer basset hounds to pick up the scent to the next location. <laughs> Let's follow them. Oh, wow. There's a forest full of trees. But hold on, what's hanging from them? So this is pretty cool. It's a forest covered with the best kind of books. These books are filled with code-breaking and detective instructions. Use your magnifying glasses to read one out. Okay, let's keep these two on their toes. Okay, puffin ears, I come in a pair and you will need to tie and untie me. What am I? Um, um, shoelaces? That is the correct answer, shoelaces. Robin, are there any magical inspiration areas on this island? Actually, there are. Over there, on the top of the hill, there is a great library full of detective stories. It's a place I come to ever so often to find inspiration for one of my mystery books. Robin, the Mysterium Island, is there anything else hidden on it? 
There is, there are a lot of plants that don't grow fruit. They grow different types of lovely snacks that we can eat. They have cookies and cakes, and of course, grapes for Skylar Ray. Are there any other animals on the island? There are. My name is Robin, and so there are lots of little friendly robins flying around who will help you out if you have any questions for them. Where's Jasper? Hmm. Why is this part of the sand all heaped up like this? Oh, the treasure! Awesome! Oh my goldness! I'd love to take one of these back for show and tell. My friends would never believe me otherwise. Jasper, no! Don't touch that. Oh, Jasper, you didn't just. Hey, I'm sorry. I was so hypnotized by the shiny gold, I couldn't help but put it in my pocket. Uh oh, there's a big lightning cloud ahead of us. And the sinking sand is starting to swallow us up. I don't mean to alarm you, but the dogs are starting to bark at the pirate ship. I think we might have woken its ghostly inhabitants. Okay, okay, okay. All right.、Uh, don't panic, everyone. Don't panic. Stay calm. Stay calm. <laughs> breathe. Breathe in and out. Breathe. 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 Breathe.、Uh, I've got my notebook here, and I think this will guide us back safely. Let's see.、Uh, okay. If you break a rule, there's only one way out. You have to solve the riddle. Quick, let's look at the box on the tree. Oh no! The letters are falling off the pages. Can you all hear that? It's a ticking sound. We've got to ask the author if in doubt. Robin,、uh, do you have a riddle by any chance? Please say yes. Please, please, please. I do. Grab your pencils and paper, everyone, and draw down three dots, three lines, and three dots. Quick, look in the books. Look up something called Morse code and see if you can work out what these mysterious dots and lines mean. Guys, what do you think that means? Um, I don't know. Three dots, three lines, and three dots. Nine. Guys, think. What do you think that means?、Uh, could it be a sound like an audio sound? Oh, oh, save our souls! Um, SOS. Yes. Whoa! And we're back. We escaped. That was a close call. Feels good to be back in the Puffin Library. Yeah, <laughs> apart from the rule breaking, <laughs> which always happens, what was your favourite part of the magical land? My favourite part was the magical inhabitants. My favourite part was the mysterious stuff on the island. You two were such great detectives. Why don't you take my detective magnifying glass to help you solve more mysteries in magical lands? Cool. Let's add this to the Puffin Library. Well, a big thank you to you, Robin, for sharing your magical, mystical world with us. If you want to be in an episode of the Puffin Podcast, send us a voice note or email to puffinpodcast at penguinrandomhouse.co.uk. And for more exciting summer holiday activities, head to puffin.co.uk forward slash podcast. Before we go, can you tell us more about Murder Most Unladylike? So, Murder Most Unladylike is a series of books about two detectives called Daisy and Hazel and their friends. They're always traveling to different places, different parts of the world, and everywhere they go, they find exciting mysteries to solve. And by the magic of podcasts, we can take a quick listen now. My name is Hazel Wong, and I never expected a murder on my summer holiday. But then, nothing about the English seaside was as I'd imagined it. Two and a half years ago, I was sent from my home in Hong Kong to Deep Dean School for Girls, a very English boarding school. Before I arrived, I hoped I might have polite English boarding school adventures with midnight feasts and jolly pranks, and a best friend who looked like a character from an English children's book. And I did. But somehow the midnight feasts and the pranks became the least exciting parts of my life in England. For my best friend Daisy Wells and I have been caught up in several real-life murder mysteries during the last few years, 
and we are now seasoned detectives with horrid murders, kidnappings, and midnight chases as ordinary to us as geography lessons. I am not the girl I was when I first arrived in England, but all the same she is still there, underneath everything that has happened, and some things never change. No matter how hard I try to understand the English, I never quite succeed, and this trip was no exception. When Daisy and I were invited to the seaside by Daisy's mysterious Uncle Felix and Aunt Lucy, and instructed to bring our friends and rival detectives, Alexander and George, I was delighted. A beach to me is a soft, smooth stretch of sand between pure blue sea and high green mountains. The water, when you dip your toe into it, is as warm as a bath, and the sun beats down beautifully hot. I now know that I ought to have been prepared. I have suffered through two chill-blainy English winters, three blustery springs and three drizzly summers, but somehow I still saw that soft white beach in my mind. And then we stepped off the train at Saltings yesterday, and a seaweed-strong gust of wind slapped my face and rain spattered against my cheeks, and Daisy took in a huge breath and said, Oh, heaven! I stared at her in shock. My teeth were chattering and my bare legs were goose-pimpled. This was not the beach holiday of my imagination. This was hardly a holiday at all. This was torture. Ah, that was a great story. Thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Puffin Podcast, Mission Imagination, with me, Skylar Ray. And me, Jasper. And don't forget, keep being curious. That's right, Puffin is at home. And don't forget, you can hit the follow button for weekly episodes to be delivered to wherever you get your podcast every Wednesday. And if you've enjoyed today's adventure, please rate us and write a review so other Puffineers can find the show. Keep on reading and solving mysteries, everyone. Bye. Bye. Oh, there are the keys. Finally, I found them. You've been listening to Mission Imagination, a Puffin podcast created by Puffin Books, produced by Max Creative. Hosted by me, Baba Tunde Aleshe, with Puffin ears, Skylar Ray Manorin and Jasper Alvarango Hall. <laughs>